Writer Comprehensive 3, Part 4. And this afternoon, what we're going to do is we're going to add at least four more cabinets. And we're going to do the island, which consists of two cabinets. And then there are two cabinets next to this cabinet. This, this was C1. Next to it, we're going to add a cabinet. I think it's C19 which is a three draw bank and C7 which is the microwave cabinet. And the microwave cabinet by the way is a divided base. So we're going to depart from what we've been doing. So far all of the cabinets we've been drawing have been our standard style for the Gracie Hopkins kitchen. The cabinets we're going to do today are going to depart slightly from that style. For instance, this island, the front cabinet of the island, which I call the baking cabinet, is going to be shorter than standard. While the eating cabinet, the one behind it, is going to be the same height as these cabinets, but they're going to have the depth of an upper cabinet, 13 inches. This cabinet over here is going to be pretty much standard, the three draw bank. But the one next to it, the microwave oven cabinet, is going to be a divided base with, an, with a non-standard height. So each of those, three of those, are going to require us changing parameters. So what I want to do at this point is to back up a little bit and tell you how I started with the Gracie Hopkins kitchen and the Gracie Hopkins style. When you start out on a new project and you want to create a style, it makes no sense to start from scratch. Rather, it makes more sense to build off an existing set of defaults. Cabrider supplies in the factory settings, or what I should say are the de default file selector uh, files. It supplies a set of imperial defaults and a set of metric defaults. And there's a short description of what they are. The Gracie Hopkins kitchen was going to be primarily a frameless kitchen, but it was going to be a frameless with inset joinery for the backs and inset joinery for the um, stretchers, um, shelves, and, and, and the like, the bottoms and the tops. But I also didn't want it to be pure face frame. I wanted to have a little bit of a little bit of face frame by just adding the styles. You can see that here in this picture. The vertical styles are there. 
no rails, simply styles. So what I did was I started off with the Imperial defaults called frameless and inset joinery. That was my starting point. So I loaded that. If I wait a moment, it'll come up. And if I look at the face frame here, notice for pure face frame, no styles or rails are drawn in either the base or the upper cabinets. Well, I wanted the styles. In fact, I wanted all types of styles except end panel styles because I'm not using any panel, any frame and panel uh, construction here, just sheet construction. So the wall style I wanted, the opening style I wanted, sheet style, not the end panel style, finish style, connector style, blind and butt styles, no rails. I wanted the same thing for the upper cabinets, which I can change here, although it doesn't matter because this is going to end up being just for the base cabinets, but I'll change them anyway. Now, you'll find out later, had I changed anything, any of the rails settings, I would also have had to update this table. We'll see that later. But right now, if I update this, everything looks good here. Let's look at the carcass. Notice that I'm using inset joinery sides only for the backs. So the backs are going to be inset sides only. And I'm also using inset joinery as a construction method for the top, bottom stretcher and fixed shelf joinery. So that's the primary difference between the default settings that come in CabRider and what I am storing called, now if I were to save this, using this tool right here, Save Cab Rider Settings. It's this file right here. I've saved it as CW3C for Cab Rider 3 Comprehensive Base Basic. I'm not going to resave it because I already have it saved. But that's what I would do. I would save this basic style. And I'd use that for all base cabinets that we're going to use that basic style. Now we're going to see later on, in fact very shortly, that I, I'll even have to modify this for some of the cabinets. But that's my standard base cabinet style for this project. And it's stored away. So today we're going to be drawing some other cabinets. And we'll have to go in and modify those. Now the other thing I wanted to point out is each of these tabs has a bunch of parameters with defaults. In total, there's 13 tabs. And in total, there's about 400 different parameters with defaults. If you want to know what they are in detail, and you should know what they are in detail if you're going to change them, the best way to find out is to go to Extensions, Cab Writer, Open User's Guide, and I'll look at this User's Guide in 100%, and let's bring in the index here. Okay, notice down here there's Appendix A, Cab Writer Settings tab. Let me open that up. And this first portion in the tab, in the Appendix A, just explains what parameters are in the various tools you can use to manipulate them, save them, and, and, and restore them. 
And then each of the 13 tabs are described in detail. I can open up any one of these. For instance, if I were to open up the face frame and go to that chapter or that, por you know, that uh, portion of the Appendix A, it'll show me what the face frame tab looks like and the defaults that come with the cab writer when you install it. And it'll explain each of the defaults in detail. So you want to familiarize yourself with this. This actually would be a good portion of the manual to read through entirely. Could be a little boring, but on the other hand, you're going to be changing defaults frequently. And you might want to know what it is you're changing. So here it is, all 13 tabs. And you can pick any one of them and look up the default that um, you want to look for. By the way, in these sections, right below the picture, this heading will tell you the section of the tab that you're looking for, and this will tell you the parameter. For instance, basic styles and base styles and rails. Base styles and rails. It's that section right there. The first one is wall style. Base styles and rails, wall style. So that's how you find them. Okay, with that, I want to move along and start drawing our first cabinet which is going to be C13L. Before we can begin drawing the cabinet, let's look at what we have to do in order to um, uh, set up our parameters. This is C13L, this cabinet right here. And let's see if I can get a better look at it like this. That's a little better. Notice its depth, the standard depth, but its height is different. It's 32 inches high instead of 36. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to change our defaults for the for the uh, cabinet height parameter of this base cabinet. And we're also going to have to do something else. When you make the cabinet shorter, the defaults you had set up for the boxes, the draw boxes and the draw fronts, are going to have to change. So let's take a look at that. Right now, if I look at what I've got, notice my countertop height is 36. And for 36 inch cabinets, I've got this all set up and it's correct. I know that because these are all green. But if I go back, to the base cabinets, and I change this from 36 to 32, and update it. And now look, now look at face frame. Notice these are red, and the reason is the cabinet's shorter, and it's four inches shorter, and it's indicating this here. It's saying something's got to give, so this simple thing I can do is it's telling me how much things have to change. This has to change by four inches, minus four inches. So I could take two inches off of each of these. So I'll make that 13. Make that 13. I can update it right now and just see what happens. And there we go. It, it is now green. I have to do the same thing here. Now I want to keep this six inches. So I'm going to take two inches off someplace else. And I can easily do it by making that eight, making this 12. And down here, I'll take one off this, one off this, and two off this. So I'll make that six. Make that six, 
and make this eight. And I'll update it. Okay, now I can save this. I can save this as the baking cabinet base. I'm not going to do that because I've already done it and I want to stick with what I've got. I don't want to mess that up. But that's basically how you would create the, ba uh, the baking center base default. So when you, I'm not going to save this, I'm going to cancel. So on each of these cabinets we, that we change, we're going to have to change the parameters, but the parameters could have other issues that we've got to pay attention to. And we'll see that again on the next cabinet. So for now, let's close this out. And let's bring in the Baking Center defaults. Now we can close this and begin drawing our cabinet. Okay, here's C13, the cabinet we're about to draw. What I need to do is outline in our SketchUp model where this cabinet belongs. Notice here, it's 36 inches from the front of these cabinets to the front of these. 36 inches. The cabinet depth, well actually the two cabinets back to back, the depth of the two cabinets is 37 inches. That's from the front of the face frame of this one to the front of the face frame of this one. Here's an error in this drawing. I don't know how it crept in, but it's very, very minor. You notice this says 50 and 15 30 seconds. And this says 15, 50 and 17 30 seconds. They both should say 50 and 1 half or 16 30 seconds. So we're 1 30 second off here and 1 30 second off here. So what we're going to use is 50 and a half here and 50 and a half here. So I've taken the time offline to create that island um, construction lines in our drawing. And so let's go to that. So let's just check this. I've, I did this offline. That's 50 and a half. That's 36. And then from here to here is 37. And this is 60, which leaves 50 and a half to this one. So that's all correct. Now we can start drawing this cabinet. I'm going to zoom around here so I can see it better. And with the story stick tool, I'm going to start this time from right to left. And remember this C13L had a three draw bank at each end and in the center was a two-door standard base. So let's draw that. That's going to be a right sheet. This will be a left sheet. Whoa, something's wrong here. I should have lefts here. So I have a feeling what I did. I'm going to back up here. I have a feeling what I did was I made this the wrong thing. That should be a right sheet. Yes, I did. There we go. And this should be a left sheet. And now if I remember correctly, the the openings for the draw bank is 15 inches. So I'll use the distance tool. From out here, 15 inches. I'll 
I'll do the same on the other side. And now what's left, I'll just check. And that's 24 inches. So I'll hit escape. And that's right. Okay, now let's use the end key or the command key on the Mac. And notice this time, box one is on the right because we drew it from right to left. And that's going to be a draw bank base, three draws. So if I hit next, now the center box is what it wants, box number two, which is going to be a standard base with two doors. And now it wants to know about this box on the left. It's going to be a draw bank base with three draws. Now I'm patient. Very patient. There we go. So we got what we wanted. Our three draw bank, three draw bank, standard base in the middle, two, two doors. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is make sure I've got this numbered correctly. So I'll check the numbering. And the number says C11L. Well, we already have a C11L, so I'm going to make this C13L. Tell me C13L is not valid. What did I do? I did something wrong. Oh, yeah, it just wants the number 13. And if I check it now, C13L. Okay. So now what I want to do is this cabinet back here. But before I can do that, I need to know how to change the depth of a cabinet. Well, it's very similar to what we did before. What I'm going to do is load the defaults that I've set up previously in store called the breakfast cabinet base. I'll load those and go to the base tab. Notice we're back to a 36 inch height, but I changed the cabinet depth to 13 inches. Now when you change the cabinet depth, one of the things you want to check is where the shelf holes and, and, and other holes are going to go. Normally the shelf holes are fairly wide on a 24 inch deep cabinet, but when I make this same cabinet 13 inches, I've got to make sure that the holes aren't trying to be drawn outside of the back of the cabinet. So I'll go to CNC setup or CNC boring right here. And look at the base shelf system holes. Notice the front row is 37 inches, I'm sorry, 37 millimeters. And the back row reference point is the back and it's also 37 millimeters. So that means the front row is gonna be referenced from the front, the back row is being referenced from the back and they're both 37 millimeters. So I should be okay. It should automatically adjust. However, had I had the back row offset reference not from the back, but from the front, and I made the cabinet shrink, I would have had a problem. I would have gotten an error. 
and that error would have told me that I'm trying to drill holes in space, basically, where they can't exist. But we've already fixed that, and everything's fine. So let's close this out, and let's draw our cabinet. Now what this is going to be is a two-box cabinet. And both boxes are going to be a standard base with two doors. So let's start here. That's going to be a left sheet. This is going to be a right sheet. Now I don't know if we've used this tool before, but if I hit the control key once, notice the cursor turns to a C, stands for centering. And what I want is to divide this into two boxes, two equal boxes with equal uh, front openings. Now, in this case, it doesn't matter whether I use these outside guide points or the inside guide points. But it's always a good habit to use the inside guide points because it's possible that this style would not be the same as this one and they might have different widths. And if they were different widths and I use the outside guide points, I wouldn't get equal openings. So it's always a good practice to use the inside guide points. I'll just click here and here, and I get a centered, perfectly centered connector. And now I can hit end, command on the Mac, and this is going to be a standard base with two doors, and again a standard base with two doors. And I wait and be patient. Well, now that isn't right. And let's see what happened here. Up along the blue axis, 34 and 3 quarters. Oh, my front is wrong. My front is wrong. I don't know how that happened, but I can easily fix it. This gives me the opportunity to show you another tool. Suppose I want to know what the defaults are that were used to draw this cabinet. Well, what happens when the cab writer draws a cabinet it stores all of the defaults in every single part of that cabinet. So for instance, this connector style here has within it all of the defaults that were used to make this cabinet. We call it the cabinet's DNA. So I can choose any part because they all have the DNA. I can choose any part and say, retrieve cabinet defaults. And now I'll go look at base, and cabinet height is wrong. That was supposed to be 32. So I'm not sure what happened there. Let me make that 32. And while I'm at it, let me look at a few other things. That's correct. And I am using inset sides only and inset joinery. All right, so that looks correct. So I'm going to save that before I do anything else. I'm going to save that in the baking center. I must have saved the wrong default before, but now I can correct it by saving those. It says it already has that saved. Do you want to overwrite it? Yes. Now I want to redraw this cabinet. You can't see that, so let me try something else. 
redraw selected cabinet. And it says, do you want do you want to use the stored defaults? Well, no, because the stored defaults are wrong. I want to replace them with the new set that I just put in the cab writer settings, so I'll say no. And I'm patient. And there we go. Now, that's much better. Ah, uh, look at this. I thought I fixed this up and saved it correctly once before, but I still have a problem because while I changed the cabinet height, I didn't change the door and draw boxes. One more time, we'll do this. And hopefully we'll get it right. We'll retrieve the cabinet defaults. This time we'll look at the face frame. And sure enough, it's telling me there's an error. And I really thought I fixed this once, but apparently I didn't save it. Not a problem. And this will be eight. This will be 12. And this will be six. This will be six. This will be eight. And we'll update it and see what happens. And that's correct. And so now we'll close it. And one more time, we'll save it under the baking cabinet. And say yes. And we'll redraw this and say no again, because we just made a change. All right, now we've got it correct, finally. All right, so now what we have to do is Renumber this. That should be number 13. And this one, by the way, should be number 11. Okay. So there we go. Our next cabinet to draw is going to be this one right here, which is a three draw bank. So let's look at the uh, layout drawing and see what the dimensions are. So here it is, it's C19. If I zoom in here, it's 20 and a half inch opening. 20 and a half inch opening, and it's a three draw bank. And drawing this should be something you can do in your sleep right now. So let's go and um, draw it. Okay, here it is. We're going to draw it right here. And remember the opening is 20 and a half. So we can take the story stick and the distance tool create an opening right here 20 and a half now this is the opening so I have to come over this side and this is going to be a left connector because on the left side of that's going to be our microwave oven And now I'm going to share the space for a connector with this one. In other words, we're going to draw one right over top. So this right connector here is going to be drawn right over top of this one. And during the cleanup phase of this drawing, I'm going to have to delete one of those. We, we don't want two connectors over top one another. 
But for now, in the drawing, no problem. So I'll call that a right connector. Not sure what that was about. Let me back up. In fact, let me cl clear my story stick. This tool can be used anytime you get confused about what you've done here and you want to start over. So I'm going to clear the story stick and draw it again. So again, this should be a left connector. And this should be a right connector. And hit the end key. Then I'm going to make this a three draw bank. Draw base bank, three draws. There we go. And you can see down here, there's some things drawn over top of one another. But during the cleanup phase of this project, we'll take care of all of that. We're not going to worry about it right now. Now look at the mistake I made. I forgot to change my defaults back to the set that I wanted. So let me correct that now. I want the standard base for this cabinet, the base basic. Okay, now we'll redraw that cabinet. And we're going to say no because we just changed the defaults we want to use. There we go. That's fixed. Now this wants to be C19. And right now it is, if I look over at the entity info, right now it's C9. So I'm going to renumber it. Remembering all I need here is the number. So I'll type in 19. And there we go. Take a look at, look at it just to be sure. And sure enough, it's C19. Okay, now we're going to draw C7 right next to this, which is going to be the microwave coven, uh, cabinet, microwave oven cabinet. Now, this is going to be a different cabinet. We haven't drawn this before, and we're going to take this one a little slow so that I can explain to you how to use divided bases and divided uppers. In Cab Writer 3, we've improved the divided cabinets such that you can now have 15 different compartments or cavities, if you will, in a cabinet. And each one of those compartments or cavities can be either a draw or two doors or an opening like a cubby. So I'm going to explain all of that and take a little time to do it. So let's get on with it. But before I do, one of the things I want to do is be sure to load, so I don't make this mistake over again, let's be sure to load the defaults we're going to use for that. And that's the microwave base right here. So we'll load those up. And now just close it and we're ready to begin drawing. And to do that, let's look at our layout drawing. This is our divided base microwave co uh, cabinet right here. It's a one box cabinet and it's a divided base. Let's zoom in and take a look here. Again, this is a situation where we're going to share a connecting style that we'll have to clean up later. And we're going to have a connecting style over here that at some point we're going to have to bevel. But when we first draw it, it'll be a simple connector style. The important part here is that this opening in this one box divided base 
is going to be 29 inches. So we'll remember that. And let's go and look at the finished drawing. Here's the microwave cabinet right here. And it's a divided base. It's got two compartments. This lower compartment is going to be a two-door base cabinet, or two-door uh, compartment, much like standard cabinets, much like, um, you know, these cabinets here. Inside will be a shelf, and you can use it for storage. Above it is going to be an opening, and the opening is going to be used for the microwave, so you can slide the microwave in there. And it's about countertop height, slightly less than countertop height. And the height of this whole cabinet to the top of this small countertop that sits on top of it is 50 and 7 eighths inches. That's 50 and 7 eighths inches. On top of that, we have a very shallow standard upper, although it's non-standard in the sense that it's taller than a standard upper and it's shallower than a standard upper. But otherwise, it's a standard upper, two-door cabinet. So, we're going to draw this now. And what, oh, the other thing I want to mention is, notice I sort of broke from the standard style. Notice in all the other cabinets, there's no rails anywhere. But in this cabinet, and in this other divided cabinet over here, I've got mid rails. And in this one, I also have an upper rail. I did that intentionally, not to break up the style intentionally, but just to show you how in these uh, divided cabinets you place rails and things. So let's go to our current drawing. And let's draw this cabinet. I want to start out by looking at the defaults that we loaded for this cabinet. And just explain them a little bit to you. If I go to the base cabinet and look here under divided base, the cabinet height is I set for 49 and 5 eighths. If I put a one and a quarter inch countertop on top of that, that would be 50 and 7 eighths, which is what we want. So this is how we set the cabinet height for a divided base. Just simply, it's got its own cabinet height and we set it, in this case, to 49 and 5 eighths. Now, remember I added some rails to this cabinet. So let me look at the face frame. And you'll notice that in addition to the other cabinets, we've got we've checked these two check boxes. That is we're going to draw the top rail and we're going to draw mid rails. By the way, notice down here I've got what would normally be a problem. But it's not with divided bases and divided uppers because divided bases and divided uppers do not use this set of inputs to determine where doors and I'm sorry where draws and draw fronts go. So I don't have to fix this up and I'm not going to but I just want to show you if I went back and took these out and updated this. These numbers are correct if I'm not drawing top and mid rails. But if I draw top and mid rails, all of a sudden they're not correct. But as I said, this isn't used for divided cabinets. So on divided cabinets, if I'm storing defaults for just the divided cabinet, which I'm doing in this case, I, don't, I can ignore this error. Okay, so let's close this. I'll just update it and close it. Let's draw this cabinet. 
Remember that the opening was 29 inches. So I'll start here. I'll come this way. And I'll make that a right connector. And I'll set the opening to 29 inches. Oops, I want to be on the line. And I've got to go over this way. And I'll make that a left connector. Now watch what happens when I hit the end key. This is going to be a little different. I get my standard box selector and I'm going to choose a divided base. And I get this divided box, dialog box. Notice that I have 15 choices here for the type of cavity I want. And notice I have 14 dividers here. The way you want to read this is the following. Notice that this line down here represents the bottom of the box. This line up here represents the top of the box. So between the bottom of the box and position one of a divider, I can have, I have a choice of how I want to fill that cavity. That's a cavity from the bottom of the box to position one of the box. And then from position one to position two, I have a choice of how to fill that cavity. Notice these are physically offset so that this field is roughly in the middle of these two fields. And each one on the way up is positioned between two fields over here. So the way you read this is, this is my first cavity, second cavity, third cavity, so on and so forth. This is my first partition and between that partition and the one below it is going to contain this cavity. Okay. Now this is going to be simply two cavities. The first one I want to set for 29 and 3 quarters inches. Trust me, that's the right number. When you do this for your own cabinet, you may have to experiment a little, draw the cabinet, make some measurements, see if they want what you see if they're what you want, and if not, you may have to do it again. Um, I've done that, but uh, for this one, I'm going to give you the answer. It's 29 and 3 quarters. And what I want in the cavity between the bottom of the box and this partition is I want a door. Actually, I want two doors. And I want a fixed shelf above the doors because that shelf is going to be the shelf that the microwave sits on. The other thing is my fixed shelves want to be offset by five eighths of an inch. And I'll show you what that means in a, in a little bit. But just trust me for the moment. My fixed shelves want to be offset by five eighths of an inch. All right, so I've got my first compartment, my first cavity between the bottom and the top. Now, where is my top compartment? Well, if I'm only going to have one more compartment, then it's going to be a compartment that goes from this divider all the way to the top. So as long as these are zero, and there's nothing entered in here for a divider here, the compartment is going to be from the top of the box 
to wherever this compartment, uh, this uh, divider ends. And this is going to be the type of cavity. And, and I've said none. In other words, I'm not going to have a door or drawer or anything like that. So this is all I need for this cabinet that I'm going to draw. This will become a little clearer when we do it again a few more times. But for now, this is all you need. Let me say OK. And now, since I've only got one box in this, I can say OK here. There we go. Notice what I've got. And if I've done this correctly, let me make some measurements. I'm going to go up along the blue axis. That's 49 and 5 eighths. And if I put a countertop on top of that, I'll add an inch and a quarter or an inch and two eighths. So that'll be 50 and 7 eighths. And that's what I want. I've also got my two compartments, or my, my yeah, my two compartments, the, cav the empty cavity here and the cavity with two doors. And this was my offset. Remember, I had a 5 8 inch offset. Well, this rail is one inch. And if I didn't offset it, the bottom of this shelf would be lined up with the bottom of this rail. But since this is a one inch rail and I offset the bottom by five eighths, this sticks above by three eighths. You can do the arithmetic offline, but that's what you'll get. So by putting that five eighths in there, I've created a shelf that's offset from the top of this rail by three eighths of an inch. Okay. So now we've drawn that cabinet. Let's make sure that the number is correct. Right now it's saying C10, but we know it should be C7. So I'm going to renumber it to C7. And when I renumber it, I'll check it. And sure enough, it's C7. All right. Let's take a look at what we've done so far. I think we have, um, I think we have one more base cabinet to do over here. And this is a refrigerator. Oh no, we have one more base cabinet here. So we have two more base cabinets, which we'll do in the next video. Until then, have a good day.